Tsukuni was an ugly idiot who was so dumb that his grades couldn't get him into high school. So his parents, desperate to get rid of the loser, enrolled him at Yaokai Academy. However, this causes Tsukuni to accidentally enter a world full of monsters where he had to hide his identity as a human while creating a harem of monster baddies. Tsukuni being a dumbass, was unable to secure a grade that would allow him to attend high school. His failure meant that he would be required to repeat the year, but luckily for him, his mentally unstable parents were able to secure a transfer for him to Yaokai Academy. However, the school had a reputation for being terrifying and abnormal. The next day, Tsukuni headed to his new school and remarked that it seemed to be located in another world. While walking, a talking bat called out to Tsukuni, and as he stood there in shock, a girl riding a bicycle crashed into him. They both crashed into the ground, her underwear visibly showing while Tsukuni somehow ended up with his hands underneath her skirt. Once they got untangled, Tsukuni was struck by how pretty the girl was. She quickly apologized and introduced herself as Mocha, but before speaking further, she bit into his neck and drank his blood casually. Despite this weird first encounter, they agreed to be friends, most likely because Tsunkyun dared not fumble a cultured queen. At the school, they were welcomed by a hot werewolf teacher who informed them that the school was designed for monsters and the aim was to teach them how to coexist with humans. Upon hearing this, Tsukuni began to pee his pants, but she went on to add that any unsuspecting human who entered the school premises would be killed on the spot. Just then, a student remarked that he smelled a human nearby, but before Tsukuni could be discovered, Mocha entered the classroom, and her entrance diverted their attention. Shortly after class ended, a bully who wanted to feel Mocha's rice cakes attacked powerless Tsukuni, and so Mocha had to defend him. But despite tasting his blood and seeing how weak he was, Mocha was still too dumb to realize that Tsukuni wasn't a monster. Instead, she confessed her love for him and showed him her melons. While Tsukuni stared at the juicy melons, Mocha explained that if the rosary around her neck gets removed, she'll turn into a true vampire. She then tried to bite his neck once again, and this caused Tsukuni to freak out and run out of the school. Still lovesick, Mocha ran out after him to stop him from leaving, but he informed her of his human status and remarked that since she hates humans, then she should let him go. While chasing after Tsukuni, Mocha gets attacked by Seizu, who reveals himself to be an orc. Her screams brought back Tsukuni, who attempted to stop Seizu but was thrown away like a rag doll instead. While getting beat up, Tsukuni also confessed his feelings for Mocha and tried feeling her melons, but mistakenly removed her rosary. This allowed her to transform into a baddie vampire, and Seizu's limbs began shaking from the power of her aura. She then knocked him unconscious with one kick and a flash of her plots. Tsukuni started losing consciousness, but Mocha caught him before he fell and placed his head on her melons. Once he regained consciousness, Tsukuni discovered that the school bus only came to pick up students once a month and so he was stuck in the school till it returned. However, he had already decided to stay there for a while because of Mocha. Upon hearing this, Mocha grabbed his neck and kissed him while taking a little blood for herself. Later on, Tsukuni writes a letter to his parents detailing his stay at Yaokai Academy, and explains it is a school built and designed by monsters. After that, he headed to class with some other boys. The boys all spotted Mocha walking towards them and began fawning over her, but she ignored them and rushed over to Tsukuni. This annoyed them, but they felt too intimidated to challenge him because they believed that he defeated Seizu. While they were walking hand in hand, Mocha informed Tsukuni that she hadn't had breakfast, and before he could respond, she bit into his neck and kissed him. Once she got her fill of his blood, Tsukuni moaned like a baby saying he wasn't her snack and ran to a secluded area. Upon getting there, he spotted a cute girl kneeling on the floor and crying for help. Tsukuni quickly ran to her aid but was greeted by the sight of her plots and bouncing melons. His virgin thoughts took over as she pressed her knockers up on him but he decided to help her to the infirmary. As they walked, the girl introduced herself as Kiruno Kirunu and placed the weak-willed Tsukuni under her spell by using her melons to get him under her control. At this point, Mocha walked up to them, trying to apologize to Tsukuni, but Kirunu compelled him to ignore Mocha and leave with her. Not understanding what was happening, Mocha assumed that he had chosen Kirunu over her and got annoyed. Later in class, Mocha and Kirunu got into a staring contest over Tsukuni, but Kirun had something more planned. After class, Kirunu confronted Mocha and challenged her, saying that she was a succubus who planned on turning all the boys in Yaokai Academy into her love slaves. But Mocha was hindering her plans as the boys were falling for her instead of Kirun. So, she decided to steal Tsukuni from Mocha to defeat her completely. At that point, Tsukuni approached them, trying to apologize to Mocha for his earlier behavior. But before he could speak, 
Kirun charmed him and ordered that he leave Mocha. This caused Mocha to run away in tears while Kirun celebrated her victory. While crying alone outside the school, Mocha's rosary began speaking to her. It informed her that the succubus was controlling Tsukuni, and it would become permanent if she kissed him. At this, Mocha ran to find Tsukuni. Kirun, however, was about to kiss Tsukuni in another part of the school, but somehow, he resisted her control because of almighty plot. This made Kirun mad, and she revealed her true form in order to destroy him. But as she was about to attack, Mocha burst into the room and pushed her out of the window. But before Tsukuni could escape, Kirun flew back into the room and grabbed him with her tail while dragging him outside with Mocha in tow. Kirun dropped them both in the forest and began attacking from the air, but Mocha protected Tsukuni, stating that he was her first true friend. This got Tsukuni emotional, and he jumped to protect Mocha while dragging her rosary. This unlocked her true form, allowing Mocha to easily defeat Kirun with a single kick, and she was even ready to kill her. But Tsukuni stepped in between them and stupidly argued that Kirun was too cute to be a bad person. The next day, Tsukuni and Mocha met up for their morning walk, and he apologized for the previous day. He also gave her permission to drink his blood, but then Kirun popped up behind them, offering gifts, and said that she'd chosen Tsukuni to be her life mate. This statement resulted in both girls fighting over who owned him. Days passed and Tsukuni stood at the midterm results board and saw that he was ranked 128th, while Mocha was ranked 13th. While he stood, thinking about how huge the gap between them was, Mocha ran over to him. She asked that they study together while they stared into each other's eyes like horny bunnies. However, someone was watching them from the shadows. The stranger watching them was Sendo Yukari, the number one student in their class. However, while she was watching them, a group of guys from their class started bullying her. This resulted in Mocha getting involved to stop them from hurting her. After the incident was resolved, Yukari introduced herself to Mocha and Tsukuni. Mocha stated that she'd heard about her as she was four years younger than the rest of their class, having skipped several classes. Yukari then screamed that she loved Mocha before jumping on her and grabbing her melons. The sight of it nearly made Tsukuni lose consciousness. But what shocked them even more was Yukari asking Mocha out on a date, which she agreed to if it was a friendly date. From then on, Yukari refused to let go of Mocha's melons, stating that they were bigger than they looked. When Tsukuni tried to stop her, the little creep remarked that he was an uninteresting individual with no special traits, much like those mid-manga leads. She then challenged him for Mocha's attention and revealed that she was a witch who would drive away anyone who came close to Mocha. However, the three bullies who had attacked Yukari were hiding nearby and heard her reveal her true identity, which was against school policy. Later, Kurun helped Tsukuni clean up his injuries in the infirmary while secretly celebrating that Yukari had separated him from Mocha. In a bid to further distance Mocha from Tsukuni, Yukari created a voodoo doll of Tsukuni which she used to make him rub Kirun's melons in front of Mocha. Yukari also made him pull down Kirun's underwear but then revealed herself to gloat. Furthermore, despite Tsukuni's protests, Kirun and Mocha refused to punish Yukari, who ran outside the school. While there, she was attacked by the bullies from earlier, who revealed themselves to be lizardmen. They stated that they wanted her out of the class and planned on eating her. However, Mocha, Kirun, and Tsukuni all appeared to stop them. The lizard men slashed Tsukuni in the back, causing him to fall from the attack. But as he fell, he once again mistakenly removed the rosary around Mocha's chest, and her vampire blood awakened. Mocha's aura stunned the lizard men at first, but then two of them attacked. She effortlessly defeated them in mere seconds and then faced the third one. He ran up to attack her, but she kicked him in the mouth, thereby breaking his fangs and flinging him into the river with a single kick. All the while, she still somehow managed to show off her underwear. With the lizard men defeated, Yukari asked why they put themselves at risk for her after everything she did to them. To this, Tsukuni replied, saying that she was now one of them. A few days later, Mocha and Kirun walked in on Yukari, groping Tsukuni in the classroom. She told them that although she still loved Mocha, she had also fallen in love with Tsukuni, resulting in all three girls fighting over who loved Tsukuni more. Tsukuni was heading to school when Mocha and Kirun ran up to him and began fighting over who got to walk with him to class. While this was going on, Yukari also ran up to them and jumped on Tsukuni's back. Meanwhile, Tsukuni, on his part, was contemplating whether or not he should leave the school. Soon after, they were in class receiving a lecture when Tsukuni had a sudden outburst over his confusion about what to do. Later in the day, Tsukuni and Mocha were outside while she pleaded that he allow her to drink a little blood. However, Kirun interrupted them and insisted that Mocha had been drinking too much of Tsukuni's blood and that it had to stop. 
They then got into an argument over whether Kirun could make him into her slave or if Mocha could drink his blood. After that, Sukuni was walking alone when three boys walked up to him and accused him of being their enemy because all three of their crushes, Kirun, Mocha, and Yukari, liked him. They then began to beat him up but were interrupted by the girls, who stopped them. Later on, Sukuni once again contemplated whether he should continue at the academy, given how weak he was. Meanwhile, in another part of the school, the three losers plotted how to get rid of Tsukuni. While the girls discussed their feelings about being watched around school by the boys, as they discussed the issue, they suggested that they escort Tsukuni around the academy so they could protect him from attacks. However, this further frustrated Tsukuni, who still felt powerless. After that, Yukari spotted Tsukuni leaving the school and immediately informed Mocha. While waiting at the bus stop, Tsukuni was confronted by the three boys, who revealed their monster form and began attacking him. Just as they were about to kill him, Mocha and the other girls arrived and saved him. Tsukuni was disappointed that he once again needed their help, but Mocha slapped him and not in a kinky way. She said helping each other is what friends do. The three boys got so annoyed seeing their crushes caring for Tsukuni that they combined forces and attacked him. Tsukuni lost his balance when they punched him and once again mistakenly removed Mocha's rosary as he fell, thereby awakening the vampire blood within her. With her true form released, the combined monster began worshipping Mocha as its idol, but she dismissed them as fools. Mocha then asked Yukari and Kirun for their assistance in defeating the monster. Yukari and Kirun got the monster to stumble while Mocha kicked it away with a single kick, and with that, the three boys went back to their human form. They agreed to disappear and no longer disturb the girls or Tsukuni. After the fight, Mocha's vampire personality tells Tsukuni to remain at school because the other Mocha would be lonely without him. While the other girls said they'd miss him, Tsukuni then informed them that he had no plans of leaving and just wanted to give the bus driver some letters to mail for him to his parents and cousins. The next day in class, their teacher gave them two new pieces of information. First, a phone that would allow them to connect with the human world had been installed on campus, and the bus would now leave school daily rather than once a month. Tsukuni cheered at the news, while while Mocha got so intoxicated by his smell that she jumped on him and kissed his neck. During a school football game, Tsukuni somehow scored a goal in honor of Mocha, which was also the winning goal. Later, Mocha gets excited because Tsukuni gives her permission to drink his blood for the first time. Once she has done so, she dances happily and walks away towards class while Tsukuni, who watches her leave, realizes that Mocha still has no idea that he has feelings for her. Once their classes ended, they both attended a club fair in the academy in search of a club they could join. After browsing through the options, they eventually settled on the swimming club, which was the only somewhat normal one. The thought of Mocha in a swimsuit led Tsukuni to have a sus fantasy of them making out. However, upon joining the club, Mocha didn't wish to swim due to her fear of water, so she angrily watched as Tsukuni flirted with another girl in the pool. On his part, Tsukuni kept getting turned on while the swimming club captain's body pressed on him in the water. Then she began pressing her plots against his back, which got Mocha angry with Tsukuni and made her decide to leave. Although Torin tried stopping, the swimming club captain further antagonized Mocha and forced her to leave. As this was going on, Kirun and Yukari joined Tsukuni in the pool. Meanwhile, Mocha limped away until she finally crashed down in pain which her rosary stated was because water weakens vampires. The next day, the swimming club threw a party in which new members were divided into teams and played a series of games. Although Mocha was still in pain from her encounter with water, she nevertheless wanted to return to Tsukuni despite the warnings of her rosary. While the swimming club captain, who introduced herself as Tamao, revealed that she had wanted Tsukuni since school started, Tsukuni still turned her down because he liked Mocha. This rejection caused Tamao to reveal her and the rest of her team's true mermaid forms. Some of them encircled Tsukuni, while others blocked Kirun and Yukari from reaching him. When Mocha arrived and saw the situation, she jumped into the water to save Tsukuni, but she immediately lost consciousness. Tsukuni managed to escape Tamao and swam into the pool after Mocha. He was then able to remove her rosary, thereby releasing her vampire form. Her vampire form confronted Tamao and the other mermaids, telling them to stand down. But they ignored her and said the water was their element in her weakness before they started dousing Mocha with water. At this point, Yukari and Kirun intervened to take down the other mermaid. Mocha lured Tamo out of the pool and trapped her in a net. She then slapped Tsukuni for hurting the other Mocha and walked away. The next day, Tsukuni apologized to Mocha, and they got into an argument about which club to join. However, a blonde-haired girl named Shizuka interrupted them and asked that they join the newspaper club instead. 
They both agreed, as did Yukari and Kurun, who ran to join them. This development caused Shizuka to jump for joy, as she now had four new members. Moka hugged Tsukuni because they'd finally been together in a club and kissed him on the neck. While a girl dressed up in the bathroom, she suddenly felt the presence of someone watching. This also happened to a girl dressed in her room, who then screamed as a shadow approached her. The next day, Moka pleaded with Tsukuni to allow her to drink his blood, which she did despite his protests, and then she thanked him for the meal. As they continued with their walk, Kirun appeared and grabbed Tsukuni while placing his head between her melons. She was excited because they were in the same club. She planned to use the club activities to make them fall in love, while Moka vowed not to lose to her. None of them seemed to hear Tsukuni's plea as he suffocated between her chests, until Yukari finally pointed it out. At the newspaper club, they were introduced to the club leader, Morioka Jine, who was obviously the peeper. He asked to be called Jin and gave them an orientation about the club. Jin asked if they had anything they would like to report in the paper, to which Kurum mentioned the peeping case in which someone kept peeping at girls while they dressed. Later on, while the girls placed flyers asking for information on the case, Tsukuni noticed that Jin kept looking underneath the girls' skirts as they stood on ladders. But when he attempted to confront him about it, Jin instead told the ladies that Tsukuni was the one looking at their underwear. This got them all pissed at him, and they left. Later on, while in the bathroom, Mocha's rosary cautioned her to be wary of Jin. The next day, Tsukuni attempted to apologize to Mocha, but she ignored him as punishment for looking at her pants. Meanwhile, Jin overheard some girls saying Mocha kissed Tsukuni on the neck and decided to separate the two by framing Tsukuni as a pervert. At that point, the girls stopped talking to Tsukuni, so Jin invited him for a walk with him. He then told Tsukuni to take a peep through a window, which turned out to be the female changing room and took a picture of him, which he planned on showing Mocha so she'd hate him. Before Tsukuni could stop him, the girls all ran out and accused him of being the serial peeping Tom, just as Mocha was passing through. Meanwhile, Kurun and Yukari decided to investigate what really happened. Jin approached Mocha while she was alone and showed her the image of Tsukuni peeping into the girls' changing room. But Kurun and Yukari interrupted them as he was trying to frame Tsukuni. They argued that certain details that he mentioned weren't visible in the photo. At this point, Jin attempted to change his story but they kept finding loopholes in each one. They then accused him of being the peeping Tom, and with no further excuse to use, he turned into his werewolf form and attacked Mocha. Just then, Tsukuni ran up to them and tried defending Mocha, only to trip and fall while removing her rosary. With her rosary removed, Mocha switched into her vampire form, and Jin immediately attacked in a bid to make her his woman. Jin had the upper hand until the clouds blocked out the moon which allowed Mocha to easily defeat him with two swift kicks. The next day, the newspaper club revealed that Jin was the peeping Tom. Mocha kisses Tsukuni on the neck as girls chase Jin in the background. The newspaper club was distributing the newest edition of their paper to the student body. Once done, they all decided to celebrate successfully distributing all their papers. Whilst Jin went off to harass some girls into modeling for him, they were busy discussing their plans for the party when a strange girl walked up to them. She remarked that they were all too friendly with each other and then asked for a newspaper, which Tsukuni handed over to her. This caused her to closely observe him, remark that he was cuter than she thought, and then leave. The three girls got annoyed by her, but Tsukuni calmed them down by reminding them about their party after school. Later in class, the girl from earlier walked in and surprised everyone. Nekorom sensei introduced her to them as Shureyuki, adding that she'd been absent for most of the term. After class, Tsukuni spotted Shureyuki watching him. She then walked up to him and said she found his write-up on the school paper interesting, adding that she was a fan of his writing. Shureyuki further stated that, from the way he writes, he believes that Tsukuni was as lonely as she was. Meanwhile, in the staff room, a male teacher approached Nekorom sensei to discuss Shureyuki's sudden appearance in school. He informed her that she should be careful, adding that only students with major problems refuse to resume school at the start of a new term. While they were discussing, another teacher joined them and stated that the issue of Shureyuki resuming late had been an issue since junior high. While hanging out together, Shureyuki refused to allow Tsukuni to return to his friends. She then went to confront Mocha and informed her that she'd never see Tsukuni again. Shureyuki began strangling Mocha, who fought back, only to discover that it was just an ice doll. The real Shureyuki was a snowwoman who had imprisoned Tsukuni on ice. However, Mocha and Kirun interrupted her before she could complete his ice jail, having destroyed Shureyuki's ice doll. Before a fight could break out, Tsukuni confronted Shureyuki and rejected her feelings for him, which caused her to disappear with the wind. 
Later that day, Katsubo-sensei discovered Shirayuki crying alone in the woods. While Tsukuni, Moka, and Kirun have developed a cold after their encounter with Shirayuki, they soon discover from Nekorom-sensei that Shirayuki has almost killed Katsubo-sensei. As such, the entire faculty was searching for her and would expel her once found. Tsukuni ran out to find Shirayuki while Jin gave the girls some information. Upon finding Shirayuki, Tsukuni apologized for how he behaved, but she started having an outburst. The girls came to meet them and explained that the photographs Jin gave them showed Shirayuki defending herself from Katsubo-sensei. Once again, Tsukuni tried apologizing, but Shirayuki's power had gotten out of control. Her ice doll creations started attacking. But Tsukuni removed Mocha's rosary, thereby releasing her vampire side. She immediately destroyed the ice dolls and knocked Shirayuki unconscious. Afterwards, with Shirayuki exonerated, the group got together to recover. Yukari and Kirun discovered that Jin was still peeping at girls, so they decided to beat him up for being a pervert. Meanwhile, Mocha kissed Tsukuni while Shirayuki watched. The math teacher, Ruriko Sensei, asked Tsukuni a question during class. Still, he was unable to answer it, which caused everyone to laugh. So after class, Tsukuni pleaded with Mocha to tutor him in math so that he wouldn't repeat the class. She accepted after listening to his pleas and invited him to her room later that night so they could study together. Although he began freaking out over the thought of being alone with Mocha, she assured him that she'd do her best for him before smashing him into a wall and drinking his blood. Just then, Yukari and Kirun interrupted them, and they both began arguing over who was a better fit to tutor Tsukuni. Shirayuki asked to join their study group as she hadn't been in school for long. Although Tsukuni wanted to turn them down, Mocha insisted that they all study together. Then, they all headed to the study room, where Yukari and Mocha took turns tutoring them. Afterwards, Ruriko-sensei banned them from continuing with their study group. She then grabbed Tsukuni and placed his head between her melons while instructing him to go to the remedial room the next day for extra lessons. The next day, Kirun informed the group that Ruriko-sensei adored getting attention from boys. Kirun further added that she always used her melons to make the boys like her. Shortly afterwards, Tsukuni headed to the remedial class, where Ruriko-sensei greeted him in a dominatrix outfit. He asked her what she had planned, but she just whipped him and said that as a student, He's his teacher's slave. Thus, she had the right to do whatever she wanted with him. Later that night, while studying, Mocha thought to herself that there was more she could do to help Tsukuni. The following day, while playing around, Kirun and Yukari bumped into Tsukuni, who was standing outside classes memorizing mathematical formulas and ignored them. Next, he ran into Mocha, who presented the notes she had written for him. However, Tsukuni continued memorizing the formulas with a blank face. Then Ruriko-sensei appeared, collected the note, and then slapped Mocha with it. Days went by without Tsukuni spending time with his friends. Meanwhile, Ruriko-sensei kept brainwashing Tsukuni so that she would only think about her. One day, Mocha overhead, Tsukuni screamed and ran into the remedial lecture room, only to find Ruriko-sensei and her Lamia monster brainwashing Tsukuni. Despite her best efforts, Mocha was unable to snap Tsukuni out of the spell. Just then, Shirayuki jumped into the room to freeze Ruriko-sensei, but she retaliated with fire, thereby weakening her. Then she pinned Mocha to the wall using her tail and was about to kill her. However, at that point, Tsukuni had woken up from the spell, having seen the note Mocha wrote for him. He immediately ran to her aid and snapped off Mocha's rosary, thereby releasing her vampire side. Mocha's vampire side swiftly knocked out Ririko-sensei with one kick, and Shirayuki froze her. Then, it was the day of the exam, and Tsukuni thanked Mocha for her help teaching him. This got her so emotional that she hugged him while kissing him. Everyone but Kirun passed their exams and began preparing for the summer break. It was summer vacation, and the newspaper club was set to go on a retreat in the human world with Nekorom Sensei. On the day of their trip, Tsukuni and Mocha were the first to arrive at the bus stop. They spent most of their time staring into each other's eyes until everyone else eventually arrived. The school bus took off into the human world once they were all present. Upon reaching the human world, Tsukuni got so excited that he commented on how good it feels to be back. This caused Kirun to question why he was acting like a human, but Mocha quickly remarked that he had stayed there for a while. Later on, Mocha, Tsukuni, Kirun, and Yukari were playing volleyball on the beach, and Yukari questioned Tsukuni about his time in the human world. Kirun then said she had briefly thought Tsukuni was human, which shocked everyone, especially Mocha and Tsukuni, who feared that his secret would be discovered. After that, Mocha and Tsukuni were lounging together and about to kiss. However, they were once again stopped by Yukari and the rest, who wanted Tsukuni to hang out with them in the water. 
However, Mocha couldn't join them because of her weakness for water, so Tsukuni suggested that they explore a flower garden close to the water called Witch's Hill. While exploring Yukari and Kirun, I overheard two tourists say that the garden is haunted by witches who kidnap people. Kirun then remarked that Yukari's kind is abductors, which made Yukari retort that only fools blindly believe rumors. They then got into an argument, which caused Yukari to use her powers. However, a witch hiding in the bushes was watching their exchange. She remarked that she would have to inform her master about Yukari. At night, while everyone was busy setting up their camp, Yukari felt left out, as nobody was willing to allow her to participate due to her age. She then went to sulk in an isolated area of the beach when she suddenly felt a presence in the garden above. Upon returning to Witch's Hill, Yukari was met by the witch from earlier, who introduced herself as Ruby. Ruby informed Yukari that she had been observing her since earlier in the day because she wanted to be friends. Meanwhile, back at the camp, Sukuni noticed that Yukari was missing. At the hilltop, Ruby informed Yukari that she needed her help in destroying the humans before they destroyed her home. She also asked Yukari to live with her on Witch's Hill forever, adding that her master had a plan. However, Sukuni interrupted them before Yukari could respond. Ruby immediately attacked Sukuni, thinking he was a human who wanted to destroy her land. She refused to calm down despite Yukari's efforts to explain that Sukuni wasn't a threat. So Yukari equally began to attack, leading to a battle between the two witches, which Yukari ultimately won. After defeating Ruby, Yukari apologized to her and said that she would be unable to join her on Witch's Hill because her friends were more important to her. Still determined to keep Yukari with her as her master commanded, Ruby struck down Tsukuni with a sneak attack that left him unconscious. This caused Mocha, Kirun, and Shuriyuki to lose control of their powers and dash at her in rage. A child, Ruby, cries alone on Witch's Hill but is soon comforted by a mysterious figure who promises to always be with her. Back in the present, adult Ruby wakes up to find herself in a strange tent surrounded by the group. She immediately tries to attack but is calmed down by Tsukuni, who hands her a soda. Ruby then began telling them the story of how humans barged into Witch's Hill and started destroying everything. She then once again asks Yukari for her help in destroying humans, as she's the only one left to protect them. The group, however, protests against her plan to wipe out humanity, especially Yukari, who asks if they could live in harmony. Tsukuni then invites her to stay with them at Yaokai Academy. However, she walks away in contemplation before returning to her master on Witch's Hill. Upon her arrival, her master, who has a BDSM kink, wraps her up in vines. Later that night, the group wakes up to find Ruby missing, so they run up the hill in search of her. However, before they could go far, the girls got picked off one after the other by vines. Suddenly, Ruby appears and says she'll destroy them for attacking Witch's Hill. She summons man, eating plants, to attack Tsukuni. Seeing Tsukuni in danger jolts Shureyuki, Kirun, and Yukari into escaping from the vibes and protecting him like good little girls. Meanwhile, Mocha was still getting fed up by the vines. Eventually, though, Tsukuni managed to remove Mocha's rosary, thereby unleashing her vampire side and freeing her from the vines. Ruby quickly attacked Mocha with vines, but they were easily brushed off. At the same time, Mocha landed a powerful kick on her that sent her crashing. Still, Ruby created bigger plant creatures who took Tsukuni hostage. She then blocked the girl's attack while shooting piercing vines at them and screaming about her master's ambition. One of the vines pierced Tizukun, causing Mocha to rip out of the vines holding her and land another blow on Ruby. Mocha then freed Tsukuni from the plant creature holding him and returned to battling Ruby. While the girls continued engaging Ruby and the plant men, Tsukuni ran to meet her master at his home. Upon getting there, he realized that the master wasn't actually there. Meanwhile, all the girls had been captured by Ruby and were being hung on trees, showcasing their underwear. But before she could kill them, Tsukuni returned and revealed that her master had been dead for a while. He added that Ruby had created a fake scenario inside her head in which the master was alive. After hearing this, Ruby lost control and began using dark magic. Nevertheless, the girls were able to destroy her wand, thereby cutting off her magic, and Ruby disappeared in an explosion. The group presumed she had died in the explosion, but the next day, their school bus arrived to drop off Jin who surprisingly had Ruby in his arms. Jin informed them that he found Ruby unconscious by the beach, and it seemed like she was protecting something. In the distance, two tourists stumbled into Witch's Hill. At the same time, the voice of Kid Ruby played over, saying that she'd always protect the hill. The second semester started off with Tsukuni and Mako taking their usual walk to school. Mako commented that Tsukuni hadn't visited his parents during their trip to the human world. 
This caused him to remember his discussion with his mom about not visiting, and she said it was fine as long as he was doing well. He told Mako everything was alright, and then she gleefully jumped on his body and bit his neck. Then, the rest of the group ran up to meet them at the school entrance. Next, they headed to the newspaper room, where they examined the latest issue of the Yaokai newspaper. While there, Shuriyuki asks that they call her Mizor since they are no longer strangers. Then they went out to share their paper with the students, only to discover that another group was already sharing newspapers named Yaokai Square. Hyrun confronted them, stating that the only legitimate newspaper club in Yaokai Academy was theirs. However, a second-year student named Kato introduced herself as the captain of the Super Newspaper Club. She then informed them that her club had gotten approval from the school, and that she planned on bringing in new journalism. This further engaged Kirun, but Kato said they should compete by producing better content. The group began disturbing their newest edition of the Yaokai newspaper, but the students were uninterested in its content. Later on, they approached Nekorom Sensei to ask if the Super Newspaper Club was actually registered. Nekorom Sensei informed them that it was, and the school planned on shutting down whichever one of the newspaper clubs was less popular. At this point, Kurun was determined to ensure they succeeded, whereas Jin spotted Kato entering the Public Safety Commission. Kurun and Yukari failed to seduce more guys to read their papers. Jin informed them to give up the competition as the other paper was backed by the Public Safety Commission. He explained that the commission is the school police force, and they've started getting corrupt. So they were trying to destroy the newspaper club because of its rising popularity. Jin then ordered them to destroy the remaining newspapers, but Kirun refused. They were then attacked by Kato and her minions. Kato turned out to be a giant spider monster known as Jorugumo and also a member of the Public Safety Commission. She revealed that she had been destroying clubs that challenged them and turning their members into her servants, which she planned on doing to Kirun. However, Shuriyuki attacked with ice shards before Kato could inject Kirun with her poison. At that point, Tsukuni removed Mocha's rosary and released her vampire side. Kato tried to trap Mako in her web. Still, Mako used it to pull her in instead, then kicked her towards Kirun, who in turn kicked her into her spider web, where she got tangled along with her minions. After that, they all agreed to publish a newspaper that detailed the actions of the Public Safety Commission. Meanwhile, in the Public Safety Commission office, the boss, Kayu, was getting briefed on the members of the newspaper club and Keith's defeat. He then remarked that he was ready for a good show. The group of Public Safety Commission goons were beating up a group of boys over unpaid tributes. Unbeknownst to them, the Yukari was hidden in the shadows, taking pictures of the event. This continued as the newspaper club continued gathering evidence of the Public Safety Commission's misdeeds. Once done, they had gathered enough evidence, and their next goal was to get witnesses. Shuriyuki then informed them about the Idol Fan Club, which couldn't afford the Public Safety Commission's tribute and would thus shut down. The group visited the fan club office only to be informed that the boys had been taken by the Public Safety Commission. Meanwhile, at the Public Safety Commission office, the fanboys had offered up some interesting information regarding the newspaper club. The next day, Tsukuni and Mako met up as usual for their morning walk. They discussed the need to obtain concrete evidence on the activities of the Public Safety Commission, and Mako commented on how much stronger Tsukuni had gotten. The thought of Tsukuni's strength got her horny, and she leaned in to bite him. However, Kirun appeared out of the blue and kicked her. They were then joined by Shuriyuki and Yukari. Later in the day, the Public Safety Commission walked into their class and arrested Tsukuni on suspicion of being human. Then, they arrested Shuriyuki, Mako, and Kirun for questioning. Yukari attempted to save them but was stopped by Jin, who told her to endure it. During questioning, Tsukuni insisted that he was human, however, Kaiu informed him that everyone in the school whom they had questioned suspected that he was human, even his comrades. Furthermore, he added that no one had any evidence of him being anything other than a wimp. Then they showed him the battered remains of the fan club boys, who informed them that during their fight with Tsukuni and the girls, they noticed that he was as weak as a human. After telling him that, the Public Safety Commission started torturing Mako with fresh water to force Tsukuni to transform into a monster. But since he couldn't transform to save Mako, Tsukuni confessed to being human instead. Upon his confession, Kai revealed that the girls were also in the room and had heard his confession. On their part, the Tsukuni revelation caused Kirun and Shureyuki to feel anger and betrayal. Nevertheless, those two were sent back to school. Still, Mako was moved to a separate jail for punishment because she kept Tsukuni's true identity hidden. The rest of the Public Safety Commission decided to execute Tsukuni. Back at the school, Shuriyuki and Kirun informed Jin and Yukari that Tsukuni was human, 
This revelation surprised them both, with Jin stating he felt betrayed. Jin and Shuriyuki left the newspaper club office while Yukari and Kirun discussed what would happen next. However, not long afterward, the Public Safety Commission announced to the school that it would be executing Tsukuni shortly. This generated mixed responses from the student body, with some supporting the execution and others against it. The Public Safety Commission, however, silenced any student who spoke against the execution. Meanwhile, Nekorom Sensei was called to the director's office. At the same time, Mako tried removing her rosary in order to save Tsukuni, but it didn't budge. Outside the school, the Public Safety Commission hung Tsukuni on a cross in preparation for his execution. Nekorom Sensei stood in the director's office. They asked if he would stop the execution of Tsukuni, to which he refused. Meanwhile, Tsukuni was still outside on the cross while his fellow students called for his death. He asked himself if things would have been better in a human school, but then the thoughts of his friends flooded his mind, and he smiled. Tsukuni then asked Caillou to spare the other members of the newspaper club. Still, he refused and instead promised to kill them swiftly. Shurayuki sat on the cliff where Tsukuni had saved her, reminiscing, when a bird suddenly appeared and told her it was her turn to save him. Elsewhere, Yukari tried convincing Kirun to save Tsukuni with her, regardless of his human status. However, Kirun was too angry that Mocha and Tsukuni had lied to them for so long. She believed that she could have helped them somehow if she'd known earlier. While she screamed about them being idiots, the same bird appeared and told her to tell them herself. Mako had almost lost faith in the prison when her rosary reminded her that she wasn't alone. Then, the prison bars suddenly broke apart as the bird from earlier transformed into Ruby. The three other girls walked up to them, having taken care of the guards. Together, they moved out to save Tsukuni. At the execution site, the Public Safety Commission had begun burning Tsukuni on the cross. However, Shurayuki froze the flames while Ruby and Kirun took Tsukuni to safety. The other girls rushed into the execution grounds and surrounded the Kaiyu. He laughed and accused them of betraying their kind for a human, adding that they would suffer the same fate as their predecessor Jin, whom he had dealt with the previous semester. With this statement, he ordered his men to execute every member of the newspaper club. Thus, the girls got into a battle with his men while Kaiyu pursued Ruby, Kirun, and Tsukuni. Seeing Kaiyu in pursuit of Tsukuni, Shuriyuki cleared a path for Mako to follow him. While celebrating Tsukuni's escape, Kaiyu shot him with a fire arrow that pierced his heart. While dying in her arms, Tsukuni pleaded with Mako to protect the others and removed her rosary. Mako quickly kicked Kaiyu away and tried feeding Tsukuni her blood. However, Kaiyu changed into his demon fox and attacked but was blocked by Jin who suddenly appeared. The rest of the girls blocked Caillou's path to Mako and Tsukuni while she fed him her blood. Although the girls managed to hurt Caillou, he transformed into his final form and decimated them. They only survived because Shurayuki created an ice shield. Next was the confrontation between Mocha and Caillou as Tsukuni lay on the floor. Caillou quickly defeated Mocha and was about to land the final blow when Tsukuni awakened and saved her. Jin also stood up and pinned Caillou down while Mako landed the final blow, knocking him unconscious. The entire school assumed Tsukuni was the one who defeated Caillou, and he was set free. Later on, Tsukuni visited Mako in the hospital while she recovered. They once again tried having their first kiss but got interrupted by the remaining girls. Then, all five girls decided to kiss him together, 